radiological diagnosis of bone lesions is a confusing topic for all and maybe that's why it's a favorite topic for examiners it doesn't matter if you're a graduate student or undergraduate student if you're preparing for examinations this video is surely gonna help you it's intended to help you make a spot diagnosis based on the x-ray picture itself obviously you need other information for a confirmatory diagnosis so let's get to the business first thing you notice in the x-ray is the location in the body the bone which is affected why because lesions or tumors are known to have favorites in examination you will get the favorite only which means if you are getting skull x-ray you should think about multiple myeloma eosinophilic granuloma hyperparathyroidism or a Paget's disease it doesn't, doesn't mean that other tumors cannot uh, be in skull but these are the common that will be asked in examination what do you see in multiple myeloma skull x-ray you see multiple punched out lesions which uh, look like raindrops so it's called a raindrop skull while in eosinophilic granuloma you see a punched out lesion inside which there is another lytic lesion so it's called hole in hole sign in hyperparathyroidism there is salt like sclerotic areas interspread with lytic pepper like areas and in Paget's disease you get the thickening of the diploid with fluffy sclerotic areas called as a cotton wool skull so a skull x-ray makes you think of four things in case you get a spine x-ray first locate the lesion if it's in the anterior part or in the posterior elements if the anterior vertebral body is affected then think of giant cell tumor eosinophilic granuloma or hemangiomas as you can see a gct will show a lytic lesion in the vertebral body while granuloma will show a vertebra plan or just collapse but um, uh, the body is collapsed hemangioma is quite different you see quadrivins there are vertical striations which uh, if seen on the ct cross section will see uh, seen as a pol polka dot appearance uh, if you go to uh, x-ray having lesions in the posterior elements think of osteoidosteoma osteoblastoma which is big brother of osteoidosteoma or aneurysmal bone cyst all all of these will appear as a cyst in the spinous process or the other posterior elements so spine is easy suppose you get a hand x-ray then should make you think of inchondroma or hyperparathyroidism again hyperparathyroidism is something which you can diagnose based on uh, history and live investigations in chondroma you can see clearly how the cortices of the phalanges are expanded uh, in chondroma can be multiple which i have shown here in the x-ray or it can be single also and especially oleus disease and mafuchi syndrome are associated with multiple in chondroma you should know the difference between the two hyperparathyroidism you see something called as brown tumor it's not a tumor that's a mesnomer and it's brown because hemosiderin is deposited there see a small cells there in the phalanges middle phalanx index finger that's brown tumor you can also see acral osteolysis which is again not the pathognomic can be seen as Raynaud disease psoriasis etc so hand again it's easy in case you get an x-ray lateral view of tibia you should see if the lesion is restricted to the anterior part of tibia only as you see here it's a x-ray of a child because the physis is open uh, so the lesion if restricted to the anterior cortex is osteofibrous dysplasia in a, ch in a child or adamantinoma in adults again the lesion here is restricted to the anterior cor cortex sometimes it can expand also because this is a malignant tumor also if you see uh, a foot x-ray 
the tumors are not that common but you can have cyst in the form of chondroblastoma uh, abc or simple bone cyst in calcaneum and talus for midline tumors which is called a scotoma because it's a remnant of the arises from the remnant of the notochord you will get a sacrococcygeal x-ray showing lytic areas massive lytic areas in this phenos occipital region also you can get this tumor called cordoma so you see this crosses here so this is how you diagnose x-rays which are located in their favorite locations the most common x-ray that you are going to get in examination is that of long bone so in long bones first thing you notice is if the tumor or the lesion is extending into the surrounding soft tissues in malignant lesions the tumor will be invading the soft tissue uh, in benign lesions soft tissue is spared so benign lesions now you have to uh, identify the exact location because the whole diagnosis will depend on it i have pointed out the common areas so first we will deal, deal with epiphyseal lesions epiphyseal will be just near to the joint if you see a lesion approaching the joint think of giant cell tumor or a chondroblastoma giant cell tumor is a locally aggressive benign tumor so it will give you the look of a malignant but it's not malignant there will be a large so bubble lytic lesion approaching the joint you see here the joint is almost invaded in radius also here in tibia also and the cortex might be breached in some cases but the pathognomic is there is it is subarticular the joint is almost approached okay on the other hand a chondroblastoma will have the same location that is in the epiphysis subarticular maybe but it looks a benign like a benign tumor because it is benign and has a sclerotic border it is well circumscribed well located small tumor so the look is so benign that you cannot uh, you cannot make a mistake in differentiating gct and chondroblastoma in subarticular or in epiphyseal regions you can have infections also because infection can be present everywhere geod that is a degenerative cyst or avascular necrosis cysts but these are generally not asked in the examinations cystic lesions basically these are central lesions in the long bone which occupy the medullary cavity as well as both the cortices mark my words both the cortices such cystic lesions can be aneurysmal bone cyst in which there is ballooning of the cortex ballooning means in a, the horizontal diameter of the cyst will be more than the diameter of the cord of the original native bone and there will be trabeculations like you see in a giant cell tumor however giant cell tumor is seen as epiphysis and these are seen in metaphysis or diaphysis on the other hand a simple bone cyst or a unicameral bone cyst uh the cyst is elongated it's invariably less thick in diameter than uh, the native bone mostly there are no trabeculations except if there is a fracture or something like that. and uh, the pathognomic is a fallen leaf sign which means that there was a fracture in the fragment traveled all the way down to the base of the cyst because there was a simple fluid not a uh, hemorrhagic fluid in, as in abc for the telangiectatic osteosarcoma we'll deal with the, them in the malignant section because all the tumors which we are discussing now are benign there are no soft tissue extensions mind it for eccentric lesions again there will be no soft tissue basis we are dealing with benign tumors and eccentric means the lesion will be limited to one of the cortices and a part of the 
medulla. One of the cortices, as you see on the axis, by two cortices I mean what you see on the X-ray, not the actual one. One of the cortices will be spared. So such lesions can be sclerotic or lytic. If you see a sclerotic eccentric lesion, think of osteoid osteoma. This is what you are asked in very commonly in exam. You see here, the sclerosis is limited to one of the cortices. And in osteoid tumor, you can sometimes see a radiolucent nidus, which is the tumor part. A sclerosis is just a reaction to it. And this small nidus is less than 2 centimeters. Sometimes you can get a stress fracture, which will look like a osteoid tumor because there is sclerosis in one of the cortices or maybe sometimes osteomyelitis as well. But the most important, I think most confusing of all the topics in this is the eccentric lytic lesion. Here the lesion is lytic and it is seen in one of the cortices, maybe along with the part of the medulla, but one cortex is spared. So think of fibrous defects, fibrous tumors. First is fibrocortical, <coughs> fibrous cortical defect, which if less than 3 centimeter is fibrous cortical defect and more than 3 centimeter is non-ossifying fibroma. So as the name suggests, there is a defect in the cortex. On one side you see a defect, lytic lesion, it is small. If the size becomes big, you may see some uh, lobulations, trabeculations, but still it will limited to one of the cortex and a part of the medulla and it will be uh, beca because it is benign it will be having a sclerotic rim. For osteoblastoma these are purely lytic lesions again they are also eccentric but they are more common in spine so if osteoblastoma in exams will be shown in a spine x-ray. Chondromyxite fibromas are eccentric lytic lesions as you see eccentric a part of the diaphysis and one cortex seen, other cortex is spared, but the cortex that it involves is very much thinned out, it looks like a malignant tumor, it is not, but one of the cortex is extremely thinned out you see. And for your information non-ossifying fibroma for fibrous cortical defect is one of the most common benign tumors and it is an ex incidental finding, there are no symptoms and finding in 30 to 40 percent of normal children we will see them and they resolve by 30 years while CMF, chondromyxide fibroma generally appears around 20-30 years of age. So we are del dealt with uh, now we are dealing with the uh, central tumor that is inchondroma. Inchondroma, if you remember, we just talked about inchondroma in hand also. So inchondroma in small bones behaves quite differently, causes cortical destruction, cortical lysis, expansion. But in long bone, inchondroma is seen as a medullary or something, a lesion, a sclerotic lesion limited to the medulla, not going to the cortex at all. So this is very simple diagnosis. You see popcorn called calcifications, small calcifications like bony islands you can say inside the bone which is not disturbing the cortices. If such a lesion is present in ribs, scapula or pelvis, think of chondrosarcoma because in, con in this in chondromas can get uh, transformed into chondrosarcomas as well. And then the diffuse ones. These have a generic appearance like sometimes they are confused with osteomyelitis also, Page's disease and fibrous dysplasia. Fibrous dysplasia, you see there is a ground glass appearance, diffuse osteopenic look I, I say. Uh, it looks like they have not been used. There are interspread areas of sclerosis and lysis. Mostly they are polyostotic, can be monostotic, and particularly in femur, they cause coxa vera, a bowing of the femur, some, something like a separate crook. And uh, 
easy to diagnose when it's polyostotic. For Paget's disease, you see a coarse trabecula with bowing in the tibia, ground glass appearance. Uh, Paget's disease, if you uh, remember, it's seen in three phases. So, in the early lytic phase, you can uh, see just a candle flame sign also. There is not much except for the blade of grass or candle sign. But in advanced mixed stages or in sclerotic stages, you see these ground glass opacities. So, you see you have dealt with epiphyseal, GCT and conoblastoma. You have dealt with central that is inchondroma, cystic is ABC or UBC, eccentric you have known CMF, the fibrous ones, the CMF, fibrous cortical defect or osteoblastoma and the diffuse ones, Paget's disease and fibrous dysplasia. In the long bone, if you get the x-ray in which the lesion is extending to the soft tissues, it's got to be malignant lesion. Then, so in malignant lesion, you have to differentiate between all these. Coming to the osteosarcoma, malignant lesions are easy to differentiate basically. Uh, let's see how. Osteosarcoma, everyone knows there is an intense periosteal reaction. In the intramedullary, the most common osteosarcoma, you see a lesion from the medulla, from the cortex, extending into the soft tissue like a sunburst or hair on it. You see here. Here on the end pattern and the quadman triangle, everything can be seen, it's seen in the metaphysis, diaphysis region, very typical, hard to miss. While in a paraosteal osteosarcoma, paraosteal means it's not exactly from the bone, as the name suggests, it's from the periosteous tissue. So it's not even from the periosteum. So do not get confused between paraosteal and periosteal. It is. It looks like a tumor which is just stuck on the bone from outside. It's heavily os ossified and lobulated like a cauliflower arising from the cortex. You can get confused with a co os uh, You can sometimes get confused with myositis ossificans or osteochondroma. But osteochondroma has other features. So we'll deal with them. With periosteal. Osteosarcoma arises from the periosteum. The medullary cavity is not involved. So you see a malignant lesion extending the soft tissue with the hair on in pattern without the involvement of the medullary canal. It's periosteal osteosarcoma. And for telangiectatic, you have already seen there is a cyst. But here the cyst has invaded the cortex and gone into the soft tissue. It's expensile. Something like ABC, the aggressive ABC look. So, after osteosarcoma, Ewing sarcoma is commonly asked. You will get the clinical picture. The child will have fever. Mark the word child. The child will have fever. His counts and uh, his uh, WBC count and uh, ESR may be raised. Mimics osteomyelitis basically. Seen in the diaphysis moth eaten appearance will be there and the typical onion peel periosteal reaction you see here the diaphysis so you see a x-ray of a diaphysis with a lamellated periosteal reaction in a child think of Ewing sarcoma simple I, I find Ewing sarcoma is the easiest to diagnose chondrosarcomas this can be primary or secondary, secondary arising from osteochondromas or inchondromas. So the first picture here is uh, chondrosarcoma arising from inchondroma. If you remember inchondroma, in, in means in the medulla. So there is a the popcorn calcifications where inchondromas. But if you see the cortex here has been invaded. It's the indus indus called industrial scalloping of the cortex and which means and denotes that the chondrosarcoma is has replaced in chondroma now on the other side you can see a big uh, chondrosarcoma the rings and arcs classification uh, calcification all the 
chondral tumors, be it inchondroma, osteochondroma, chondrosarcoma, will have calcification because chondroid tumors, cartilage tumors have pathonomic sign of calcification. Multiple myeloma seen in uh, over 40 years of age generally. As you see in the, uh, uh, you have seen in the skull, there are multiple punched out lesions. Again, the ESR calcium is raised. It means uh, you have to see the blood investigations, urine lens and proteins for making final diagnosis. You see multiple punched out lesions, very typical of multiple myeloma. And then, then can be malignant fibrous osteoma where radiographs are not specific. So, mostly you won't be asked about this as the last of the DD, I think. Distinct lesions, by distinct I mean they are unique and uh, you generally should not confuse them with anything else. For example, a bone necrosis. You see here serpentigenous sclerotic lesions in the diaphysis metaphysis, typical of bone necrosis. If we talk about osteochondroma, I think again this is one of the very easy bone tumors to identify on x-ray. You see, because they are generally pedunculated, it may be sessile also. They are pointing away from the joint um, and the, you see the medullary cavity of this tumor is in continuation with the that of the native bone and it is a cartilage cap also which you will not see in the x-ray. This also can get converted into chondrosarcoma. So you see dot all over the x-ray whatever. in uh, osteopathy striata you see striations in bilariostosis you see flowing wax like lesions again these are dysplasias or uh, storage disorders in so this is all believe me this is all you need to lo know about the bone tumors and bone lesions for your exam for a quick uh, review, bones that should ring the bell, skull, if you see in a skull x-ray, think of multiple myeloma, isonophilic granuloma or a brown tumor. In hand, you should think of inchondroma or a brown tumor. Remember the difference, anterior crest of tibia, adamantinoma or osteofibrous dysplasia, spine, anterior spine, it can be GCT or isonophilic granuloma or a hemangioma in posterior. Eleven, it can be osteoblastoma, osteoid osteoma, or ABC. Midline, you have chordoma tumors in sphenocipital or sacral coccygeal region. Long bones differentiate if it's benign, if there is no soft tissue extension. If it's epiphyseal, think of GCB, GC for GCT and CB for chondroblastoma. This is how I, I remember it. Cystic, if the lesion is cystic, which means it's in the medullary canal along with the both the cartices are touched then it can be ABC or SBC medullary means in in chondroma which it's only inside the medulla no cortices are touched or invaded if it's eccentric and sclerotic then it's easy osteoid osteoma other two are just DDs if it's eccentric and lytic then think of fibrous tumors which are fibrous cortical defect or uh, non ossifying fibroma or you can think of chondromic site fibroma osteoblastoma sometimes for a diffused lesion think of PD and FD Paget's disease and fibrous dysplasia for malignant tumors as we just know the names because these are easy to diagnose be it osteosarcoma with the sun ray uh, or hair on end sun burst periosteal reaction Ewing sarcoma with the onion peel periosteal reaction and chondrosarcoma with calcifications in rings and arcs. Now infection can be seen anywhere in any bone in epiphysis and metaphysis anywhere so I have not mentioned it and this list is not final. This is the list of most common lesions asked in the exam. If you want to check yourself how much you have learned recapitulate a bit and then come to this quiz see first word that, that should come when you see this x-ray that it is epiphyseal because you have to first rule out 
this is this is benign obviously not going to this uh, soft tissues and it's epiphyseal it's got to be gct or chondroblastoma because it looks aggressive it's gct so now this tumor is eccentric and lytic you can cover actually the headings i have given up the names so these are the first words that should come to your mind eccentric and lytic should be and it's more than 3 cm it's not fibrous cortical defect though you can use the term fibrous cortical defect uh, is fibrous cortical defect or non ossifying fibroma this one is eccentric and sclerotic has to be osteoblast osteoid osteoma this one is epiphyseal looks benign cannot be gct chondroblastoma and the cystic lesion but the diameter is not more than the native bone looks like a simple bone cyst some more examples this this cystic lesion is not in the epiphysis for sure and looks ballooned out must be an uh, abc aneurysmal bone cyst now this is a diffuse lesion the first word is diffuse so it be Paget's disease or or a fibrous dysplasia it's altering the shape something it's going into cephalic crook deformity for proximal femur it has to be fibrous dysplasia not spagus disease this is a distinct lesion osteochondroma because you see it's arising from the bone did we miss out on something uh, i think we missed out on yeah this one bone tumor it's invading the soft tissue it's malignant for sure it's lytic looks like a cyst it has to be telangiectatic osteosarcoma if you like the video tell me if you didn't like it tell me if you have queries then write in the comment section if you want more quizzes like this tell me in the comment section and if you want me to make videos on any difficult topic just tell me in the comment section thank you happy learning